Here's a look at the tail that came with the slow hawk that I purchased and then uh, I purchased one used and, and then this is the tail that I made. Uh, I made a template and then instead of having a wide area and using the double faced tape and putting it down I actually hemmed it and then I cut that back to the uh, almost to the thread line and so I created a pocket for this outer piece of carbon and then I used clear uh, tape to secure the carbon rods and this tape is by the yard and it's actually clear so you peel the back off and uh, it's supposed to work really well and then I also used the black uh, with the sticky back on it and this is uh, Dacron I believe and that's the tape that I used here so this is the finished tail uh, and then of course this is the one that I had with my unit um, if there's interest in how I did it I'm happy to make a video this is the template that I created um, I took the Dremel tool and, and made little notches so if you look there you can tell that whenever I trace this out I actually put little notches uh, with the pencil I follow that notch and then that gives me a pre-line and then I just take a straight edge and run the lines and then lay the carbon down over the lines and then put the tape on and of course the carbon covers up the line and uh, that way I know I get the carbon in the right place so that's how I went about making the tail and then lastly uh, for this update I do have the motor, I mounted the motor and uh, I did a little test run of the mechanism most important thing that you'll have to do with this unit is turn it upside down for the first run and the reason you do that is because you want to make sure it's running the right direction if you have it running backwards then as soon as it comes around the glide locks are going to lock and that's going to stall the motor throttle up a little bit you can hear the glide locks are not activated so that's just running free without the glide lock so you'll definitely want to check your rotation before you turn the model over so be sure I can't stress enough make sure that rotation is correct before you turn the model over uh, so that it's upright but as long as it's upside down like this if the motor is running backwards, the glide locks will not engage and therefore you're less likely to do damage either to the gear train or to the motor itself or the speed controller. So again, I caution you to be careful. Make sure it's turning the right way before you apply a lot of power. Now if I turn it over, you'll start hearing a clicking sound. So let me do that while it's running because I know it's turning the right direction. So now I'll lay it over. Now you can hear the clicking sound. And that click, what you're hearing is, is the glide lock actually engaging. Now this is friction free, so it's just floating. And uh, whenever it stops, depending on where it stops, if it stops below, let me get it to stop around here so the glide locks will engage. Alright, now the glide locks are going to be engaged. You can see it's coming up, so I'm going to spin it by hand. See, so you're going to watch this tab right here. You're going to see it drop. And it's going to drop right about... Oh, it's got a little... There it goes. just dropped. So now, if this were to go down and then come back up notice that it's locked now in that position so because the uh, the glide locks see them coming up there but if I pull this see it's locking that and a little bit of an angle up and the idea is that you would be able to fine-tune one maybe you want more angle I'm not sure what the angle needs to be so I've just guessed you can see I'm running actually really slow here and the gear train is really smooth 
I did not fine tune the gears or do any tweaking or put any oil or nothing. This is right off the uh, assembly line, if you will. And uh, it seems to be pretty smooth right off the CNC machine. And again, that clicking is just the glide lock engaging. You can see it in there. They come up and then they drop down. And once they drop, then you would be able to uh, glide because once it drops, see so it's not dropped yet. I'm going to go ahead and spin it by hand and let it drop. Right there, one dropped. There, the other one dropped. So they're real close to dropping at the same time. And you can see now I cannot rotate that backwards. I can rotate it forward uh, with the motor, of course. But if if I go um, and try to move it back, then it's just going to go uh, up into the glide lock position, which again would be right there. Just trying to see how slow I can get it to, to go. Now, I make a request. I'd like to make a request here. Um, this motor is apparently uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a 4,200 to 5,000 kV. It just simply says East Sky on it, and it has a 10 tooth pinion that's a 48 pitch. Uh, I need to find out where I can locate some more of these motors or an equivalent, uh, just because that's the only thing that I do not have for this project. Uh, I have not sourced a motor in the pinion. Everything else, as you can see, I pretty much have it, um, but I do need the motor and a pinion setup. So if you have information or know where I might be able to pick up such a, an item, it needs to be 48 pitch on the pinion and preferably a 10 tooth because that's what I have uh, right now. So uh, that way I can uh, continue to produce the same model. Thank you.